Welcome back compadres. Today we're out in the woods man. It's actually deer and turkey season so get your rifle out and go get you some fresh meat for that Thanksgiving holiday break. But if you can't do that, that's cool. We're still going to learn something today. We're going to talk about reservoir engineering and the Carter type curve to help us identify the flow regimes and validate the decline curve models we've been working on uh, the past few sessions. So guys, let's get started. Today we're going to use the Carter type curve to try to attempt to identify the flow regime our gas production well is experiencing. So we've done our rate time, rate cube, linear flow, and radio flow interpretations, but we don't know which one is correct. Well, a Carter type curve is a diagnostic tool for identifying the flow regime. And although it won't get it right all the time, if your data is clean, sometimes you can get a good interpretation to gain confidence in your interpretation and the reservoir characteristics that you obtained. So this is a Carter type curve. It plots dimensionless rate versus dimensionless time. And you can see here, these are just computer generated curves. And it, these curves are going to a vortex and then come out and spread out. And what you do is you plot your data on here and you try to fit it adjacent to one of these curves where your data goes through this vortex. And then after you do that, you can interpret what type of flow regimes your well may be experiencing. And so the key points I want you to think about as we go through this analysis is that the Carter type curve for our purpose is a diagnostic tool for identifying the flow regimes. What flow regimes are we talking about? We're talking about infinite acting linear flow, which is essentially equivalent to hyd a hydraulically fractured well, infinite acting radial flow, and boundary dominated flow. You can also get original gas in place and reservoir characterization parameters from a Carter type curve, but we've already done that with our interpretations. So we're going to just use this as a diagnostic tool to identify the flow regimes. It's real quick and easy to do, and that's why it's applied because it kind of it's quick and easy and it also validates your model if you have any questions. So some theory behind the Carter type curve is essentially it separates the infinite acting region and the boundary dominated region. So to the left here, your computer generated curves represent the infinite acting region. These curves go into a vortex, which is basically the interface between infinite acting and boundary dominated flow. After this, you have your boundary dominated region right here. And so Essentially, if you look at this, focus in on this infinite acting region, you can get a lot of information from this. Number one, the curve at the top here represents infinite acting linear flow or a hydraulically fractured well. And essentially, this is the slope of this line is a negative half slope, meaning that for every two cycles you go down, you're going across four cycles. Another indicator is at the bottom here. The bottom of this line represents infinite acting radio flow. So if you plot your data on here and it follows this line, it suggests that you have infinite acting radio flow. If it goes up to the top, then it suggests you have infinite acting linear flow and you'd want to use your linear flow interpretation. If it goes between these two, the data, you don't really know, but you know, the bottom line is you can still get valuable input from this because if you have data over here in this in between these two lines you know you're in an infinite acting region and then if it crosses this boundary you know you're in the boundary dominated region so why is that important because you get a lot of information when you know your well is going from infinite acting to boundary dominated because you can get your time to the end of linear flow or time to the end of radio flow and do perform reservoir characterization. If your data never reaches the boundary dominated region, you can't really uh, you know, proceed with uh, characterizing your reservoir. And if you're in the boundary dominated region, only if your data just shows up in this region, then you want to use your rate time or rate cube analysis because your well is not seeing an infinite acting uh, flow regime. And so what you, the basic procedure to uh, 
put your data on here and have it match to one of these is it's just a trial and error approach um, so what you a good initial guess is to take all your your flow rate points and divide it by the initial rate and also take all your time data and multiply it by the initial decline and you can get these from your rate cube or rate time analysis after you that'll get you a good starting point to get it on here and then you can fine-tune it with trial and error if you need to in order to uh, gain confidence in what type of flow regime you're seeing so that was a mouthful but just realize the Carter type curve is really useful and it's actually a starting point for you to begin doing your decline curve analysis and uh, it's real fast and easy as we're going to demonstrate in uh, in our example in Excel so let's go ahead and jump into that so here I've put our Carter type curve in the background of this Excel graph and I've just put the appropriate scale as we've seen uh, as it's been labeled and so what we're gonna do is I got two columns here our dimensionless time and dimensionless rate we're gonna go ahead and plot our data points doing this but before that if you recall these are the equations our initial guess what we're we're using we're gonna divide our rates by this the initial rate so each rate we're gonna divide by the initial rate and then each time point we're gonna multiply by the initial decline that we got from our rate time decline curve analysis and so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to our rate time and here we have QI it's a good initial guess and then I'm gonna carry that down and it's gonna give us DI as a percentage so that's our DI from our rate time and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'll select our time points which is all the way over here if you don't remember how to do this go back and look at my previous videos how I did these analyses but that's our data first data point right there we're gonna multiply it by our initial decline and we're gonna freeze that because we're gonna do it for each time point Let's carry it down. I think it went down. Our last data point went to like 72. So it went to 70. Okay. Our last data point over here is at 70. And then I'm going to do the same thing with our rate. I'm going to take a rate point all our rate points and multi divide it by our initial rate and then freeze that okay so this shows okay so that's our dimensionless time and our dimensionless rate for each of our data points and I have went ahead and plotted these values on our Carter type curve and look at this so you can see our data points on the Carter type curve if you recall this is our infinite acting region the bottom line suggests that we are in infinite acting radio flow and our production data is hugging that line so if I were looking at this data we see that we are in the infinite acting radio flow regime and then it actually goes into the boundary dominated flow regime right here so I would be confident of proceeding with our radio flow interpretation so we did that previously so I would be comfortable with the EUR reserves and also the reservoir characterization parameters in uh, for this example of course that can change well to well um, but you can see our production data using our initial guesses it fits the line pretty well um, your initial guess may not work for other situations in that case you want to move the data around uh, so for example if I want to move these data points shift them up I would want to decrease our QI here because it's inversely proportional to our dimensionless rate so 
If I decrease this, you'll see our curve react upwards, which it did. And then the same if you need to move these data points from left to right, you'd change our DI. So if I wanted to increase, move these data points to the right, I would change this to, I would increase this and it moves it to the right so you can see how it reacts and how you can fine-tune your interpretation but that's it guys that's what the Carter type cur curve does is it helps us identify the flow regimes and validate the model the decline curve model or interpretation that we used and so this is real critical to any analysis because these decline curve interpretation we did they don't tell you what type of flow regime there is so you have to go dig a little bit deeper and find out what you got and you can do that with the Carter type curve so I hope you guys enjoyed the video that's all we're gonna cover today um, if you like the video you know give me a thumbs up here and also subscribe and we're going to go into more reservoir engineering topics because I feel like this stuff is applicable to the real world. I don't want to be feeding you guys bad information. I want you guys to understand that engineering is focused on application, not just equations and numbers. And so <laughs> that's all I got today, guys. I look forward to seeing you next time. Adios.